Now we are going to find the Beaux-Savoy's law to find the magnetic field due to a conductor of any shape. Now for each of these cases, whether it is a straight wire or a circular coil or a coil with more turns which is a solenoid, if you want to find the magnetic field for them, then we can use the Beaux-Savoy's law. Now what does the Beaux-Savoy's law state? The Beaux-Savoy's law states that the magnetic field dB is proportional to I dL sin theta over R square. Now, sounds fairly complicated, but actually isn't so complicated. So, let's take a look at this, that what do each of these terms mean? Let's say we take a straight current carrying wire and there is a current flowing in this direction, there is a current I in the wire. Now we take a small element of this wire, say a small portion, this is a tiny portion of this wire, tiny length and the length of this portion is dl. We want to find the magnetic field at a point P over here, which is at a certain perpendicular distance from the wire, but in the expression that we have, which is dB proportional to I dl sin theta over R square, here R is this distance, the distance between the current element and the point P. R is this distance. So this is R and theta is this angle over here. Now the magnetic field at the point P depends on the current, depends on the length of this current element and the angle or the position of this point with respect to the wire and the distance of course. As the distance increases, the field decreases. Now you might be wondering what a strange expression and is there any experimental proof for this law? No, there is no experimental proof. The reason being you practically cannot take a conductor of infinitesimal length which is length dl. But when you use this formula to find the field for finite conductors, let's say uh, uh, a straight wire, a coil or a solenoid, if you use this formula to find the field for these different charged conductors, you get a correct value. This shows that this formula that we use to find the field is, is true. Now, over here we said that this is proportional, but what is the constant of proportionality? You have dB equals and what is that constant that we put here? Now that constant is going to depend on the medium in which this conductor is situated. If it is kept in air or actually more exactly vacuum, then the value that you use for the constant is mu naught by 4 pi. Mu naught is the permeability of air or vacuum. So you have mu naught by 4 pi i dl sin theta over r square and the value of mu naught is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 henry per meter. Now did you notice we took a small element dl of the current carrying conductor but we wrote the current as i. The current is not di. It's not. It's not a small current. It's the same current I which flows throughout the entire conductor. So you have to take a small element length dl, but current is I and not di. Now another point to note is that see current here is a scalar quantity. You know that current is a scalar quantity, though it has a particular direction in which it might be flowing. But the element dl, the element dl which we use over here can be written as a vector. Now if this is a vector then what is its magnitude and what is its direction? The magnitude is this length. 
the length of the conductor is the magnitude of this vector and what about its direction its direction is given by the direction in which current is flowing in the conductor so if current flows in this direction the the direction of the vector dn is upwards if the current flows in the downward direction it is downwards okay another thing is the expression for db in this form only gives us the magnitude of the magnetic field but it doesn't give us the direction of the magnetic field so what we are going to do is we are going to write it as a cross product and that will give us the direction of the magnetic field let's just write this see now we can write this as db okay instead of the proportionality we put this equal because we assume that the conductor is placed in air now you can write this as i i is a scalar quantity dl which is a vector cross r cap over r square now r cap is a unit vector which means that the magnitude of this vector is 1 and its direction is along this r vector so we can write the same expression as i dl cross r by r square now the advantage in writing it in this way is we can find out the direction of the magnetic field at the point p take the cross product of dl and r dl cross r which means first you point your fingers along the first vector and then you curl them you curl your hand so that you reach the second vector and the direction in which your thumb points which is the upward direction that gives you the direction of dl cross r now the direction of the magnetic field this is a vector over here on the diagram the direction of the magnetic field is into the paper so if the field is into the paper you put a cross and if the field is out of the paper then you put a dot and you can see that the cross product of two vectors is a vector which is perpendicular to the plane containing the two vectors now here dl and r are in the plane of this board so the magnetic field has to either be into the board or out of the board so depending on the direction of the current if the current is upwards in this direction then the magnetic field is into the board you have these concentric field lines which are going into the board had the magnetic field been in the opposite direction then you would have concentric field lines like this and they would be coming out of the board so then you would have a dot on this side 